T.E. Shaw again coming to you with the Gospel of Christ. It's our prayer that we can show you how easy it is for some to be deceived. Deception is against God's will. Wherever we teach, he says, go into all the world and preach the Gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to cause you to just fall out with God. I want you to love God and do God's divine will. So many things are happening to us in this world in which we live. But one thing God expects of us, once the preachers get out there and preach pure, Gospel, not something that they want to say from their head or from their brain, but what he has said in the book called the Bible. And if we study the Bible, we can make heaven our home. And so I'm asking you to continue to uh, tune us in and be with us. The Grand Avenue Church of Christ is located at 619 North Grand Avenue right here in Sherman, Texas. We invite you to come and be with us at any and all times. But I say to you for sure, God's Word is right. And man's deception is causing people to feel like that they deserve more than what they really deserve. But we'll get what we got coming if we don't live right. God has something waiting for us. And so I say to you, please get your Bibles now and let's study the Scripture. As uh, Brother Boyd would say, get your children in the room. They need to hear this just like you need to hear it. And so we don't want our children to be eternally lost. We want them to come to know the Lord and come to pattern their lives after Christ's life. Bow with me now in prayer. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we are so grateful and so thankful for your love and kindness and for your mercy and your grace. Father, we need you every second of the day, and we know we can't do without you. And I'm praying that you will bless delinquent members, those that hasn't been back to service since the pandemic, but I believe that you can control everything. Even when I die, I want to be thankful for, to God for allowing me to live the years that I have lived. But for sure, help me to find more people that need to know about Jesus and come to him. In the name of Christ, do we thank you. Amen. We welcome all to Grand Avenue Church of Christ. We want you to know that uh, what he wants us to do is to love his son and do the will that he has done in our lives and help us to always consider the wonderful things that Christ has done for us. And uh, again, I want you to know that the Grand Avenue Church of Christ meets at 619 North Grand Avenue. And we just pray that you will be with us and come be with us at any and all time. God, who made this world and that we're living in now, <clears throat> he made everything. And there are some folk out there, I believe, uh, calling and asking you to uh, join that program and asking you to uh, give God an offering. Well, God gave it to us and required that we be honest enough to give back to God that uh, that He wants us to give. He said, lay by in store as God has prospered you that there be no gathering come when I come. And so I'm saying to you, let's, let's let God do it. If God can make this world and make man, woman, boy and girl and give us a place to live and allow us to 
have a house to go to where we can worship and serve God, then certainly he's not going to ask you to write out uh, your donation. Give to God out of that that he's given to you. And some folks are just looking to make themselves well welcome to having money, 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 money. But money can't get you into heaven. Obedience is what's going to get you to heaven. Obedience to his word. Blessed is he that heareth these sayings of mine and do them. Yes, you're going to hear it often. And I don't mind repeating God, but I don't want to repeat man. I just want to repeat the word of God. And so I'm saying to you that we need to know that God sent uh, some prophets to come and teach us. And as we listen to the prophets uh, back in the Old Testament, but now we're not living under Old Testament laws now. We're living under the, uh, the, uh, the Christ who came, suffered, bled, and died on the cross, and was buried and was raised the third day. And then when he called the apostles together and told them to go into all of the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. And that doesn't make any difference what nationality you are. You need the Lord. And I'm, I'm just saying to you right now, you need the Lord. And so I beg you to get to know Jesus and then get to know his word and teach your children. Yes, I'm going to say that again. Some folks think I repeat, but I just want you to get it and, and, and take care of your soul salvation because you can't get it when you die. It's going to have to come to you in your heart and then you got to live by it and you got to teach others. That's why it's to go into all the world. Any nationality, and if you don't know the language, then get you uh, somebody that you can take that can re repeat the word of God to them so that they can be saved as well. I want to look uh, right now, and I want us to look at the word of God, and we're going to study the word of God so that all of us can make heaven our home. But when we look at uh, the Bible and we see in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to try my best to show you all of these verses and let you read them. But I'm going to uh, try to help you to see what God wants us to see in the Bible. In the Bible. And so when we get to God's Word, we're going to re recognize that this is somebody greater than Shaw. Amen. Somebody greater than you, but the word of God, he, God sent his son, sent the best that he had to come down here and give his life a ransom for your sins and for my sins. And so I'm begging you to listen to the word of God and, and uh, obey the word of God. And Paul, Paul wants us to know that uh, God is not angry with us. And people always say, if God is God and he's so loving, why does he let so much go on? <laughs> it's not him doing it. It's not him doing all this evil that's going on in this world. He wants you and I to obey his will. And once we obey his will, we'll find out that there is something that we need that we can't get and give to ourselves. We have to get it from the Lord. And... The Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two it so it. So I'm saying, let's go to the Bible and let us see what God wants us to see and what He wants us to do. So if you have your Bibles now, open your Bibles to um, uh, our first scripture that we're going to be looking at. So I want you to take your time and, and look with me right quick. Uh, not so fast that you missed the message. We want you to get the message. But I'm going to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I want you to listen to what is being said in this chapter. The Bible says, As the truth of Christ is in me, Paul speaking, No man shall stop me 
of this boasting in the region of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But he wants us to also know this. But what I do, I will do, that I may cut off occasions from them which desire occasions, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. And I'm saying to us that we definitely need God's help. But I'm not through with that. For such are false apostles, that's what I want you to listen to. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now we need to think about this. How can you save yourself and transform yourself? God was working with Christ and God made Christ where he needed to be. And so I say to us, Let's live according to the teachings of God and do those things that's pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. Now, if you, if you live with God and you want God to save your soul, then I beg you, get there with the Lord and do those things pleasing to Him. Not to yourself, not to your mom and to your daddy, but please God. That's what we got to do. And that's... That's all I'm saying. So then he comes back and he tells us, For no marvel, listen now, For no marvel, for Satan, the devil, I'm on, the hellion from uh, one time in heaven, but got cast out because he would not obey. And he wanted the preeminence of God in his life. But we don't need but one person to guide us like that and that was God he got his son and they all worked together and made this world what it is and all we have to do is to live and love him like we're supposed to do but listen for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves that's what's going to happen to the religious world people want to be greater than God I, I just want to do his will that's, what, that's all I want is to do his will. For Satan himself is transformed into, get that, an angel of light. Now you know better than that. If God kicked him out of heaven, what does he want him in his business now? He doesn't want him in his business. He has men that can take the word of God, study the word of God, and live according to the teachings of God's word. And so I'm saying we all need to listen to God's word and do those things that's pleasing and acceptable in God's sight. Yes, sir. Then he says, therefore it is no great thing. <clears throat> therefore it is no great thing if his ministers, now you think every preacher out there with a Bible on his arm is God's minister. No, Satan himself transformed his ministers as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So I'm just saying right here, it's as clear as you need to hear it. Every preacher that says uh, he's a preacher and they name churches after themselves, Lord have mercy, read your Bibles, just just start reading the Bible and understanding what God wants you to do. Because if you want to be saved, you can definitely be saved. But you can't be saved teaching what you're teaching if you're not teaching what God told you to teach. Amen. You got to, you got to hold on to God's hand and know that His Word is right. Amen. Then I want you to think about this. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 4, and we're going to be in that chapter for a little bit, but in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 24, you know what I think we need to do is to see that man can't put nothing together this good. Amen. Every word in God's Bible that tells us how to be saved needs to be studied and studied and studied and studied. Look for what God is saying to us. 
And you, you can't add to and you can't take from. You're going to have to do the word of God and do the will of God and save soul. That's what we're here for. Go into all of the world. I know, I know. That's what he wants. Every nationality on this earth has an opportunity to obey God's divine will. But look at, look at uh, chapter uh, 24 of Matthews and watch what he says here. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 4. Jesus says this, and I, I, I want you to listen to Jesus. <laughs> listen to Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. You hear that? Let no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and, and shall deceive many. But we don't have to live like that. We can live according to the teachings of God and do those things that's pleasing in God's sight. And if we do what's pleasing in God's sight, then certainly if we just live that life until the day he calls us from earth to reward, I'm certain that he will forgive us of all of our sins. But you got to forgive. You can't, you can't uh, sin today and say, well, God will forgive me tomorrow. No, that's not the way it works. That's what, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, but uh, I just want you to see what he is saying to us right here. Now, look down at verse number 11 in this same chapter. In this same chapter, I want you to look down at verse 11. Well, I'm going to start at verse number 9. I'm going to start at verse number 9. Then shall they deliver up, be delivered up, And afflicted. And then he says, and shall kill you. Some folk going to do you some injustice, but God can take care of all of that. That's right. He can take care of all that. I don't, I don't let people frighten me from doing what's right. I'm going to tell you what's right, whether you like it or not. But I tell you one thing, you don't want to die in your sins. Amen. Then shall they deliver up, deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and they shall, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's what he said. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then he says, then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. You hear that? They'll be offended and they will betray one another. And shall hate one another. You can see all that around us right now in the world. People hating folk because of the color of their skin. Hating them because of where they came from. That's not, that's not it. God made this world. And he, he allowed men to live in this world. Pick up the word of God and study it and do what's pleasing and acceptable in his sight. And many false prophets shall rise out of all the people that is, is, that's on this earth. A lot of folk going to miss it, but false prophets are going to rise and people are going to be offended and folk are going to think that they are all right. Because their mom and their dad is all right, but that's not the way it go. That's not the way it go. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Whew. You don't want that. You don't want that. So we say to you, let's get right with God and make sure that we live with Him. Look at verse 24 in the same chapter. Matthew 24, and I'm going to go down to verse 24. Listen how they're doing, but I think I'm going to back up because I just, I just grabbed something that I think we need to look at. Let him that is on the housetop not come down to, to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field 
return back to take his clothes. Watch it now. We must, we must know what God is doing. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck uh, in some days. But pray. You can't be doing evil and then get on your knees and say, Thank you, God, for, for hearing me. He, he, now, he's going to work with you, but he's not going to let you do evil and think you're going to get by. He's not going to do that. For there shall arise false Christ. Whoops. You hear me? False Christ are going to arise. And then you need to know that false prophets are going to do the same. And shall so great show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Some members of the church are being deceived, and they're leaving the church, and they're feeling like that they can be what they want to be. God sent His Son to come to this world. Teach us his word. Teach the disciples that he called. Send them out that they might teach other people to become disciples of Christ. Workers in the vineyard of the Lord. But we must. We must know that we are not the authority. We are the people that have got to go out and tell the folk that are not saved that they can indeed be saved. So I'm begging, I'm begging you to get your life right so that you can live with God and do those things that's pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. There's just too much, too many people dying out of Christ. You need to be in Christ. Members of the church, you need to return back to the fold. Those who have left the church and gone other ways, you've fallen by the wayside. You need to be restored. And God will restore us all when we decide that we want to live in heaven with him. This is Jesus telling us what to do through his son. I beg you, don't just grab something and think that you're going to be all right. No, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, there's a message there that we all need. We all need. That's something that we all need to understand. And church, let me just tell you too, we are all going to be held accountable to the law that the Lord had placed on us to obey. We have to be there. And there are a lot of folk that think that, well, God God knows uh, I'm weak and he knows that I, uh, I can't help it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If the fire broke out in this building, you could help yourself to get out if you know which way to go. Don't be sitting around here thinking that you're not going to be caught up in something that God don't want you caught up in. When God get ready for you, He can get you and bring you all home where He is, but your life is going to have to be matching His Word. Listen to Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 7 and 8. And, and this is what I'm talking about, people who have left the church and haven't come back. This is just the Bible. This is this is not my word. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? You ran well. But who was it that hindered you? I'll tell you, the devil don't want you to go to heaven. He wants you to be lost eternally. This persuasion coming not of him that calleth you, but it is because you allow Satan to just walk into your life, into your home, and just mess up things in your life. And I'm saying none of us gonna make no none is gonna make it if we don't do God's will. And I'm just so happy to know he loved us so that he will allow us to come to live with him throughout ceaseless ages. Please, think about what God is saying in the Word. Think about that. The Hebrew writer talks to us, and uh, 
I'm glad he talks to us in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, taste the word of God and the power of the world if they fall away. Some folk, it's going to be hard to get them to come back. Might be your relative, might be my relative, whatever. May even be me. Some preachers have fallen by the wayside. I beg you, if you see me doing wrong, talk to me about it. If you want to know what's right, I'm not going to uh, uh, just sugarcoat you. I'm going to tell you what the Bible has to say. And so I'm saying to us that we need to remember, you did run well. Some, some members of the church did real good a long time ago, but they found something else that drew their attention and made them want to do things that's not pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. So I'm just saying to you that if you want to go to heaven, a life must change. And you're going to have to get out of sin and come to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, when you've been enlightened and you look at what you have done and how you once served God and now you don't serve Him, you don't even talk to Him, you just forget all about Him, you're going to regret that. It's coming up one day. And I say to us, we need to get right in the sight of God. That's all I'm saying. We need to get right. Deception is out there. <clears throat> there are people out there that don't care whether or not you live right or do right. Or go to worship God in spirit and in truth. But I know one thing, you will regret every minute. In Luke chapter 21 and verse number 8. I, I like to take heed that you be not deceived. I'm, I'm, I'm still talking about deception. Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am a Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye therefore after him, or after them. We need to go after the folk that are going in the wrong direction. Amen. Be not deceived again, he said. God is not mocked, for whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We need to see it, and we need to do something about it. Don't just see it and fold your Bible back down. Study the Word and try to make heaven your home. In Revelation chapter 20 and, and verse number 10, and the devil, that deceiver, that's him, was cast into the lake of fire that burned with fire and brimstone. The beast, the false prophets, will also be tormented. Yes, preachers that won't tell the truth are going to be tormented. Yes, sir. Then I want you to think about this. We know not when Christ is going to come. We don't know when he's coming back. But we do know this thing. God knows, and when he sends him, he's coming back to do something that he wished he didn't have to do, but it's not going to hurt him. Because if you, don't, if you don't listen to God, you're not worthy to go live with God. That's right. God said one time, My spirit will not always strive with man, for that his flesh, yet his days shall be numbered. Our days are a number. We don't know what the number is. But one thing we do know, we know who Christ is. We know who God is. And we know who the Holy Spirit is. And if we follow their teachings, we can go home to live with God throughout ceaseless ages. So I'm begging you, don't, don't, don't let somebody run you down. But let somebody run you toward God where you can have all your sins washed away in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, we need God on our side. I'm glad to know that He's on our side and He's going to do all He can to help us make heaven our home. In 2 Chronicles, the Bible talks about it. Uh, my, if my people, 
If my people who are called by my name, look at all the names that people are calling themselves. Look at that. God made this world without our help. And yet, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, <laughs> then will I hear from heaven. And I, he said, this is what I'll do. I'll forgive their sins and I will heal the land. This land needs some healing too. It, it really does. And, uh, I saw on the news where something tragic had happened and people thought that they wasn't going to get caught, but they got caught. Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established and the top of the mountain shall be exalted above the hill and all nations shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come ye, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord's house, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of the law shall go forth Zion, is going out of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is God's word. If we listen, we can make heaven our home. So many young folk going to miss it. Daniel 2.44, in the days of these kings, says the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall not be destroyed. Mm. Won't be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms around us. So don't think that you're going get, to get away. Nope, none of us are going to get away. But one thing we do know, if we live with God, we'll get away from here. And when we have to stand before him at the judgment, we'll be so happy that he saved us. Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. You hear that? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us and in him, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him. Now, whatever I've done in life, if I've asked God's forgiveness, he will forgive me. But it's got to come from the heart. you got to study his word and know he wants you to be saved. And if you're not saved, you can't go into heaven. Amen. One thing I desire of all the things that God has blessed me with. Uh, a lot, of, I see a lot of people in, in church. Let me just tell you something. You think God don't know what you're doing. Men and women. You think God don't know what you're doing. And, uh, but he tells us, <coughs> if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery. Or a man. You look at a man and you just... Ooh, I want that man. Nah, nah, nah. Get your life right so that you can go to heaven. Because hell is going to show up, be hot. And you're not going to be able to take it. So I say for to you that you need to, you need to get right. One thing I, I, I ask everybody, when you read the word of God, let it stay like God put it. Don't take away. Don't add to it. Just remember, these are the things that he wants us to learn and teach our children. Teach our children. Kids are so disrespectful today, but parents are too. A lot of parents are not trying to teach their kids about God. Amen. I have always been a Christian. I haven't. But when I decided to settle down, I decided I wanted my kids to be in the Lord. And that's what you ought to be doing yourself. You ought to want your children to be saved. Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. When we do God's will, we can be saved. Paul said, I am the least of God's people. Yet, God showed me his kindness by allowing me to spread the good news 
of the immeasurable life health of when you are living and going and doing things you wonder about your health and why you feel like you feel maybe it's because you're not giving God the time you're supposed to give Him but I tell you one thing your wish you had <clears throat> John chapter 12 and verse 48, He that rejected me and received not my word hath one to judge me. He's going to judge us in the last days. We're going to be judged by Christ. Don't be a common person all your life. Come to Jesus. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 16, 18 through 19. Now I could go on to 20, but one thing I do know this much. Jesus promised to build his church. I didn't build the church of Christ. I didn't. I preached there, but I didn't build the church of Christ. That's Christ's building. That's Christ's place. That's his home. And uh, when, when we leave this world, we need to go where we can stay with God forever and ever and ever. So I say to you, the stone, the stone that he laid down for you and I, built his church upon, you can't find salvation in just any church. Amen. You can't. Why? Because he built the church. The church is his bride. The church is his body. And you can't just do what you want to do because you are you. You need to do what God has asked us to do. My time is all but up. But I do want you to know you got to hear God's Word. The first thing we must do is hear God's Word. That's what He said. Blessed is he that heareth these sayings of mine. Hear His Word and do what the Word say. Then you got to believe it. He don't want you to hear it and not believe it. You got to believe it. Then you must do this. You must repent of sin. Sin is what's got us in bad trouble when we was out there. But when we came to the Lord and asked for forgiveness, He washed it away. His Son's blood cleansed us up. And it got us clean. Don't you want to go to heaven? Don't you want to go to heaven? I say to you, come. And obey God. Repent of all your sins. Confess that Jesus Christ is God's son. That's right. You may be your mother and father's child. But God had first price for you. And if you live right. You'll get to go home and live with him forever. And forever. And forever. Then be baptized. Be baptized. Wash away your sins. And then you got to remember this. <clears throat> Whoever you've done wrong, you got to ask for forgiveness. You got to ask for forgiveness. Don't you want to go to heaven with God? I'm begging you. Come go home with God when He calls us. That's a life that you'll be so happy you got. And you didn't just get it from me, you got it from the Lord. It came through His Word. He gave us his word, told us to live by it. And if we live by it, we'll be all right. So I'm saying, help your children. I'm going to say that every time I get up. Get up and talk, tell you about the Lord. I want you to help your children. Because God said one time, suffer the kids to come to me. Let the children know that there is somebody that loves them and loves them well. Bow with me now in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I realize that there are many folk who have walked away from you. There are many people who have once studied your word. And there are people who say that I don't need the church. <clears throat> but they'll find out one day. And I hate to see them walk in darkness. But I'm asking you to bless them with a man to listen to your word and bless the preachers that with a heart to tell them the truth and don't just try to make them feel good. But I'm asking you to bless this lesson 
that it will sink into the hearts of folk, that they will obey the gospel of Christ and live right to the day that God calls them from labor to reward. But I'm also asking you, Father, to bless all of our sick in the church and all of those that are just doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Bless the drug addict that he get off his drugs. Bless the alcoholic that he come off the liquor. Bless those who are fornicating and committing adultery. Bless all of us, Lord, so that we can come home and live with you. I thank you for your darling son, that he shed his blood, came down here, and was talked about and sped on and beaten and all of that. But I tell you one thing, he had to love us to do all of this. Thank you, Father, for letting him come. And thank him for getting the Holy Spirit to come and guide us into all truth. I love you, God, and I just look forward to the next time we can share a message with people that need to hear it. Oh, young, and even those, Father, that feel like that they can take care of themselves, I'm asking you to bless them all. In the name of Christ, we do pray. Amen.